Hi everybody, it's time for Sunday School. This lesson is for Sunday, January the 24th, 2021. And uh, we're gonna talk today about Jesus and his disciples. And then I'm gonna read to you first of all from the uh, Bible storybook called Jesus Calling. It's by Sarah Young and Pastor Steve gave me this to, to use. And normally I just read the scripture out of one of the versions of the Bible for you, but I really liked this story in this storybook. So I'm going to read it to you from here. It's taking pieces of the Bible from Matthew chapter 4, chapter 10, and Luke 5. So listen to this. This is called 12 Helpers, and we know that Jesus had 12 disciples. Jesus had the best news ever. He knew the biggest and best part of God's plan, which was to save people from their sins so that they could live forever with him in heaven. Jesus wanted helpers to spread the news and tell everyone in the world about what God was doing. Did he look for helpers who were really smart? No. Did he look for rich people who could use their money to help? No. No. Jesus looked for ordinary, sinful people who did ordinary things. So here's some fishermen, and here's Jesus, and some other people with him. We'll, we'll learn who those are in a minute. Jesus went walking near the Sea of Galilee. That's him walking near the Sea of Galilee. There he saw two fishermen casting their nets. The men were brothers, Peter and Andrew. Come, follow me, Jesus called to them. I will make you fishers of men. Peter and Andrew knew in their hearts that Jesus was God's son, so they left their work behind to join him. Then Jesus saw two more brothers, James and John, fixing nets in a boat with their dad. So these pictures are Peter and Andrew, and this is James and John with their dad in the boat. Didn't quite get that in the screen. Okay. <clears throat> Come follow me, he said again. They also left their jobs as fishermen to go with Jesus and be his helpers. Instead of catching fish, they would go and catch people so they could know Jesus too. Jesus gathered more helpers called disciples along the way. Philip, we learned about Philip and Nathaniel a couple weeks ago. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Thaddeus, another young man named James, Simon, Judas, and a tax collector named Matthew. Matthew hung out with sinners, but that didn't bother Jesus. He already knew that Matthew would leave everything behind, his money and his job, to be a helper. <clears throat> will you follow me? Jesus asked Matthew. I will, Matthew said. Yes, I will. Matthew was so happy that he invited his friends to dinner so they could meet Jesus and the other disciples. But some wondered why Jesus would eat with a bunch of sinners. I came to save them, Jesus said. They need me most of all. Jesus didn't run from sinners. More than anything, he wanted them to be rescued. Jesus and his helpers, the 12 disciples, wanted everyone to know about God's great plan. So here is a picture of Jesus and his 12 disciples. And then an actual verse from the Bible, and this is from the New King James Version, says, this is from Matthew 4, verse 19. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And this is what Sarah Young's book, Jesus Calling, says. Think about Jesus talking to you. You don't have to be perfect to follow me. You only need to believe in me and trust in me as your Savior. You can be one of my helpers too. Tell your family and friends the good news that I came to save the world from sin. Tell them that if they believe in me, they can one day live forever with me in heaven. Isn't that good? Well, that's a wonderful story from the Bible. <clears throat> but there are some details in that story that I don't know if you caught and I think when I read those stories the very first time, I probably didn't catch them either. But I've learned over the years a lot more about Jesus and his disciples. And I want to share a couple of those things with you today. 
So again, when he called uh, Peter, who was also called Simon, and his brother Andrew, they were in a, in a boat. They had cast their net out onto the lake looking for fish. And Jesus said, come follow me and I will have you fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Now, I don't know if you know about fishing, but as fishermen, that was their jobs. Peter and Andrew, that was their jobs. And they, um, fishing helped them a lot. It gave them food to eat, but it also gave them money because they could sell the, their extra fish. <clears throat> so anything they couldn't eat, they would sell at a market. Then they would have money to buy food, clothes, other fishing supplies, and everything else that might pop up. So fishing was very, very important to Peter and Andrew. It took up all their time, and it was everything they needed to survive. So when Jesus said, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, and they dropped everything to go with him, they gave up everything. They gave up their ability to make money. They gave up their ability to catch food. They turned their back on that. And that was a big deal. They dropped everything. They left their nets. They left their fish. They dropped their ability to make money. They left their friends and their family. They dropped everything to follow after Jesus. But remember, the story said that he was on the shore with Peter and Andrew, and he saw two more fishermen, James and John, and they were in a boat with their dad. They were repairing a net. So Jesus called to James and John and said, come follow me. And they did. And they were fishermen too. So they did exactly what Peter and Andrew did. But did you remember who was in the boat with them? Their dad was in their boat with them. So not only did they leave all of their way to make a living, but they left their own father behind. They believed in Jesus so much and the good news that he had to tell them that they even left their father. Now, I can't imagine what it would be like to leave everything and follow Jesus. We are blessed that we don't have to drop everything to follow him. We still have our homes and we still have our toys and our refrigerators full of food and our, our jobs to make money. Your moms and dads have jobs to make money. <clears throat> so instead of dropping everything now, I think God asks us to drop some things to follow him. Can you think of anything that God might ask us to drop might ask us to get rid of. Maybe it's disobeying your parents or saying ugly things to other people. If you're super busy, like I used to be, God might ask you to drop some of your activities. Or if you, maybe you're an athlete and you're in two or three different sports, God might say to you, you know, I want some more of your time. So I'm going to ask you to give up one of your sports. And those Getting rid of some of those things gives us more time and more energy to spend time with God, reading his Bible, spending time in prayer, talking to him, praying for other people, or going to church. Now, this week, I want you to try to do something special for God. Just one thing. Uh, maybe you could learn of a, a Bible verse this week instead of watching TV quite as long every day. Um, or maybe you might please God by helping your parents or your teachers. I know Upshur County is back in school, so maybe you could help one of your teachers do something. You know, it might not seem like it's big or important to us to do those little things, but to God, it's like we would have dropped everything to do something for him and to follow him. Now, that's really good. And it makes me um, very joyful that we could drop something so that we can give God more of ourselves. <clears throat> you know, we, we heard that verse that Jesus would have them be fishers of men. So that's kind of weird too. What do you think that means? Well, being a fisher of men meant 
helping to bring people to Jesus. We talked about Philip and Nathaniel um, a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. And Philip told Nathaniel about Jesus, and then Nathaniel wanted to follow Jesus. And so that's kind of like bringing fish into a boat where we go cast a fishing line or cast a net and pull fish into a boat. When we tell about Jesus to someone that we know or even someone we don't know, that's like casting our line or throwing out our nets. And then when they want to know more or they want to come to church, that's like catching them and bringing them to know Jesus. I really like that picture of how us telling about Jesus is like being a fisher of men. I want to tell people about Jesus. And you know, sometimes that's hard. Um, not everybody wants to talk about Jesus. So one of the things that's important is the way we live our life as well. Um, if your friends are talking badly about another person, if you don't take part in that, that is a good example of Jesus working in your life. Um, when your parents ask you to do a chore and you do it without being asked a second or a third time, that's an example of Jesus working in your life. So I hope that you will take some time this week and think about what we've said here and um, find a way to be fishers of men, not only by telling people about the good news of Jesus, that he died for our sins and we don't have to worry about those things anymore, that we're saved by his grace, but also in the way that we live our lives. I wanted to share a little something with you today. Um, we had to put our little kitty cat down this morning. She is 18 years old, so she's an old lady. And um, she has lost a lot of weight over the last few months. I think she's been very sick. And she hardly even weighed two pounds. So she's been with us a long time. Her name was Blackie. And we had to put her down this morning. So I, um, I would just appreciate some prayers from you all for our family as we've had to say goodbye to a sweet little part of our family. But you know what? I'm so thankful that God sits with us in our, in our need and he comforts us and he reminds us that we are so loved and that he takes care of all of those little things in our lives that mean so very much to us. I also want to say how proud I am of my Courtney, who is a veterinary technician and she was able to um, put Blackie down for us today. She is a very strong young woman and I'm proud of who she is and I'm proud that she belongs to Jesus as well because that's what makes her so good at what she does. It's been a good week. I'm so glad you all are back in school. I pray for you every day for your safety and for your health and I hope that you'll pray for us too. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I can't wait for when we see each other again. I almost forgot. I did. I wanted to do a little craft with you, and then I almost forgot it. Well, I have taken um, a piece of construction paper, and I've drawn a fish on it. Now, I always tell you I'm not an artist. I'm really tickled with how this fish turned out today. So sometimes my artistry is okay. So I drew a fish. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut it out. Now, I know that we're not in church together right now. But I also know that as the vaccine gets to be more and more widely used and people create immunity to the virus, then I know we're going to get back together soon. And so I want you to think, as we were talking about the disciples and how they came to follow Jesus, I want you to think about how you can be fishers of men and maybe invite someone to church when we get back together who hasn't either has never known about Jesus or someone who hasn't been involved in a church for a long time. Maybe they need to get back involved with church. You know, you can do that with these YouTube videos as well. You can let somebody know, hey, 
we've got a Sunday school lesson and you can share the link with them so that they can watch it. Let me get my pen out real quick. So I'm gonna use this fish as an invitation. First, I, you know, I tried to find my hole punch earlier. I can't find it anywhere. So I'm just gonna use a pen and stick a hole in this. And I'm gonna get a bag of goldfish. Isn't that cute? And I'm gonna attach that bag of goldfish with a piece of ribbon to this invitation. And on this invitation, I'm gonna write just a little something or other that says, I hope to see, I'll show you that in a minute, you at church. Let's catch up at Sunday school. So that would be a good way for you to invite someone. So I used a little play on words and I said, instead of S-E-E, -E, I said, I hope to see, because a fish is in the sea. I hope to see you at church. Let's catch, like catching people, like we're catching fish. Let's catch up at Sunday school. And so I could use this as an invitation for someone, give them a little bag of goldfish, a little snack, and then remind them that we'd love to see them in church. So that's just a thought for you, a little craft for you to do. You could also make that fish and just put a verse on it. Um, maybe that verse from Mark chapter four, um, or Mark 1, verses 17 and 18 says, And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. So you could do any of that. Well, folks, it's been a wonderful time together once again, and I am so glad that we are together each week. Even if we can't be together in person, I love being together with you here on YouTube for our Sunday school. Will you pray with me, please? Father, I thank you so much for these young people on the other side of this camera. I thank you for technology and the ability to reach them, even though we can't be together in person. Father, we pray um, that the virus would be lessened and lessened in its intensity so that very soon we can be back together. Father, I love this lesson about being fishers of men. Remind us each day to work and live so that we can tell people about you. Maybe not just with our words, but with the way we live. God, we love you so much and we praise you and we thank you today in Jesus name. Amen. Thanks everyone. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you real soon.